My Chile adventures, 2011, began by flying from Seattle to Santiago, Chile, with stops along the way in Dallas and Miami. The flight took about 24 hours, with 15 hours of flight time. During my visit, I traveled mostly by bus to San Pedro de Atacama, Pucón, Valdivia, Puerto Montt, Puerto Varas, Puerto Natales, Patagonia, Punta Arenas, and Valparaiso. I started my travels in Santiago. I stayed in the heart of Santiago at the Plaza de Armas Hostel that overlooks the plaza. This plaza is ringed by the post office, museum, city hall, metropolitan church, and my hostel building. From there, I could visit the various sites and experience the major events which occurred daily, ranging from protests to entertainment. The hostel manager was offering his guests a parrilla, mixed meat grill popular in Argentina, during the performance of the pop star Miriam Hernandez in the plaza. This is the mint. How ironic that Salvador Allende's statue is by the Hall of Justice since he was overthrown by a military coup in 1973. The Cerro Santa Lucia Park is a great place to retreat with fountains and beautiful landscape. You can check out some of the Santiago skyline unless the smog is too thick. This is the first of the vertical rail systems, or ascensors, I will be riding on throughout Chile. This one took me up to the top of Cerro San Cristobal and the statue of the Virgin of the Immaculate Conception. Mercado Central is for those tourists who crave a lively setting among the remaining fishmongers and produce vendors. The food is excellent and the price is higher in the center restaurants compared to those along the edges. I had a Terremoto drink, sweet wine with scoops of ice cream at a nearby bar. This protest is against the anti-terrorist law, which has jailed some people for almost a year without charges or trials. The protesters are chanting that this law was inherited from the Pinochet dictatorship and has no place in a democracy. The chant is, we call for solidarity. The plaza is also a place for lots of enjoyable entertainment as well. Toro. No trip to Chile would be complete unless you did a winery tour. The wines here are rich and spectacular. All right, so now we are in the mic. Okay. Poet and diplomat Pablo Neruda built La Chascona named after his mistress's unruly hair. It is designed like a ship. Chile has a number of modes of travel that is convenient, clean,
comfortable and cheap that quickly gets you around the country. Buses were my favorite, especially the semi-kama or kama night buses, where you could recline and then awake the following morning in a far distant place, as well as view the scenery passing by. The town of San Pedro de Atacama is comprised mostly of competing tour companies, hotels and hostels, restaurants and gift shops housed in rustic adobe buildings. In the 7,900 foot Alto Plano surrounding San Pedro de Atacama, I toured some amazing natural sites such as the geysers del Tatio, Valle de Luna, and the Lagunas Altoplanos. <laughs> Surrounding the Plaza de Armas are the Inglesia San Pedro Church, Police, Post Office, Medical Clinic, Covered Mercado, and clusters of restaurants and tour companies. My Valle de la Luna tour first went to the Mirador, or Viewpoint, where we could see a ring of volcanoes in the distance. It was then on to the Valle de la Muerte and the Cordillera de la Sal. This gap was a salt road to Kalama. Okay, this is a salt mine. We'll be going into. After hiking along the sand dunes, we climbed to the Puesta del Sol viewpoint to watch the setting sun. The Lagunas Alto Plano tour the following day brought us to the vast Salar de Atacama and the Laguna Chaxa, where we found a few of the three types of flamencos, Andean, Chilean, and James. The salt crusts here make for some brutal hiking. After a lunch stop in Tocaneo, we head up to the twin lakes of Miscante and Meneniques at an elevation of 13,500 feet and it is about 65 miles from San Pedro de Atacama. In Socarri, we stop in to see the small colonial church with the cactus wood ceiling and the ornate figures on the walls. 4 a.m. That's the time I got up to do the geysers del Patio. They claim to be the world's highest geysers at 13,800 feet and are just over 60 miles from San Pedro de Atacama. We leave early so that when we get there it is still very cold at about freezing so the geyser steam is more dramatic as the sun comes up. 
wreckage you see is from an abandoned geothermal energy project jointly funded by the Chilean government and an Italian company. As they were running their tests, it became apparent that the surrounding geysers were losing steam and jeopardizing the tourist trade. Amazing that they let us tourists wander all over about the site. There are over 60 geysers here, along with 100 gassy fumaroles, as well as this very warm hot springs. Uh, this small town grows uh, because of the uh, suffer minor. <laughs> night bus from the Altiplano Desert brings me into the lush Araucania region and Pucón, a world-class adventure sports destination for adrenaline junkies. Pucón and the surrounding environment reminds me of many towns in the Pacific Northwest except for the Spanish. Like other tourist towns, this one has many tour shops, restaurants, hotels, and hostels. I plan to climb to the top of Villarica Volcano with an elevation of 9,340 feet. I went with Agua Ventura, which includes guide service, a complete climbing outfit including crampons, ice axe, emergency gas mask, and sliding gear including a plastic slider for the downhill portion. Okay, crampons. <laughs> I cast some of my brother Steve's ashes into the crater. He would have enjoyed this journey. Okay, this is the Argentine volcano right on the border. Here's the snowfield or glacier. It's a view to Pucón and Lake Villarica are below us in the distance. We will now suit up for the exciting ride down. My next sport adventure is the zip line with over 10 runs through the trees and across the river. The first zip line run is the scariest though. <laughs> Isabel and Andy from Switzerland and the Rodriguez couple from Chile joined me on the zip lines. My no hands run with the camera rolling proved to be a bit problematic when I failed to grab something when I got to the end. I had to pull myself up the zip line to the platform. You have to put your legs up to don't get wet, okay?
<laughs> Gracias. A three hour bus ride southwest gets me to Valdivia. It is located on the confluence of two rivers, Rio Calle Calle and the Rio Valdivia, which flows to the Pacific Ocean just nine miles downriver. Valdivia is very vibrant with the Universidad Astral de Chile, along with picturesque waterfront tourist attractions, including many lazy sea lions, thanks to generous fishmongers at the Riverside Market. One of the tourist attractions here is to take a dinner river cruise out to the old Spanish forts at the Pacific Ocean mouth of Rio Valdivia, about nine miles downriver. The Rio Valdivia joins the Rio Tornacoleones at the Pacific Ocean. The Castillo de Corral is located here. It is the largest and most intact of all the Spanish forts that were built in the 17th century. There's a smaller fort across the river at Nibla, and Isla Mancera has additional fortifications. <laughs> View from the casino. The university students were sponsoring an Echo fashion show with some music along with various clothing that were made from recycled goods like plastic garbage bags, CDs, and paper. Interesting concept. I took a local bus out to Nibla, which is about nine miles downriver and on the Pacific Ocean. There's a small fort and lots of fishing boats here, but little else. Another three-hour bus ride south got me to Puerto Montt, where I would be boarding the Puerto Eden Navamag freighter for the journey south to Puerta Natales and Patagonia. I decided to stay in the picturesque Puerta Barras, just 20 minute bus ride from Puerto Montt. Iglesia de Sagrado Corazon dominates Puerta Barras. It is based on the Marian Kircha of the Black Forest, which reinforces the town's German roots. The Casino Hotel is the largest waterfront structure and looks out over Lago Lan Cui Hui. And if the weather is clear, the two snow capped volcanoes, Osorno and Calbuco. Here is the City Hall and the Plaza de Armas. This odd museum and nearby Lutheran Church are among the many buildings that the city is trying to retain since they are popular with the tourists who come here for sports adventure activities and relaxing. The Tourist Bureau provides a walking tour map showing the locations with thumbnail pictures of these preserved buildings. Anthony Bourdain, No Reservations, featured this restaurant and had bass with crab and abalone. They had none of that, so I had a delicious salmon with crab meat dinner with steamed potatoes and some great red wine. 
Here is the Puerto Mont Mercado near the Nevamag ferry terminal where I will be boarding the boat for a journey through the Patagonia archipelago to the Puerto Natales, the gateway to Patagonia and the Torres of Pine National Park. We were supposed to travel on the Evangelista, however, it had been damaged when it hit some rocks navigating through one of the narrow passages. So we were boarding a day later on the Puerto Eden. This boat was supposed to be on its last voyage before being scrapped. These boats are primarily freighters that take on just over 200 passengers in 52 rooms with two bunk beds in each room plus 16 private berths. I paid for steerage at 255 while others paid double that. Okay, Captain Rick, just take us home. Yes, 180 degrees south. Coming up to landmark on the way to Patagonia. We actually got some naturalist briefings along the way. Heading south. Most of us were upgraded to the rooms on the upper decks since there were only 35 passengers with another 50 added on the last day at Puerto Eden. It was rainy and foggy during most of the trip. When we entered the open Pacific Ocean at the Bay of Pain during the night, it felt like our beds had become turned into a roller coaster ride as the boat wallowed from side to side from the huge swells. This is not a leak, it is a water ballast release. Oh. We are watching sea lions and dolphins. <laughs> Off to the right is a shipwreck. Our captain, with his lucky white scarf, navigates us through some of the narrowest channels, including White, Sarmiento, Concepcion, and English. This guy will release these capstans to yeah. allow the anchors to drop if they had to real quick. <laughs> Okay, it's bingo night. With bingo night, the winner gets to dance before getting the prize. <laughs> It is now daybreak on our last day of our Navimac cruise through the Patagonia archipelago as we continue toward Puerto Natales. Okay, we're coming into Puerto Natales. Here is a group of travelers now bound for Patagonia and the Torres del Paine National Park. Okay, Puerto Natales, Plaza de Armas.
Before heading off to the trails of Torres de Pine, a group of us met for dinner at the Afragonia, a fusion of African and Patagonian foods. At the table are John and Bonnie from California, me, Murray from Australia, and Jarno from Finland. Here are various views of Puerta Natalis, which is the outfitting mecca for Torres del Pine, and where I rented a sleeping bag for my trek along the popular W circuit. A two-hour bus ride gets us to the entrance of Torres de Pine, where we pay our entrance fee and then board a catamaran that takes some of us from the east side of Lago Pejo to the west side. The first red circle is where we catch the catamaran. The second is the beginning of the trail to Refugio Gray. The third is Refugio Gray, where I spent the night. It was an 11 kilometer hike. I retrace my route and head up the French Valley. Back down the trail, I spent the second night at Refugio Guernos, the fourth red circle. It was a 36 kilometer hike. The third day, I hiked up to the Mirador del Torres, the fifth red circle, and returned to the Hotel Torres del Pine, the sixth red circle. It was a 60 kilometer hike. The winds and waves were building up as we crossed Lago Pejo in the catamaran. The ferry boat landing. Lago Gray. It's 11 kilometers, three and a half hours. At the beginning of the trail to Refugio Gray and the Gray Glacier, I was fairly well protected from the strong winds and the rain was slight and scattered. Laguna Los Patos. Here is my first view of Lago Gray and some floating icebergs. I arrived at Refugio Gray and had a full dinner of chicken and rice with chocolate mousse for dessert along with a box of red Chilean wine. This is as close as you can get to Gray Glacier without obtaining additional permits. I had peekaboo views of the Cerro Peng Grande mountain range throughout the day. Upon my return, I spotted Lago Pejo along with Punta Bariloche. I am now headed up the trail to French Valley. This trail gives me the first views of Lago Nordenskol. The Quirnos mountain range will be to my right during my hike to the viewpoint above Camp Britannico. Vamos 
After a long day of hiking, I got to Refugio Guernos just in time for dinner. Guernos. In the morning, it's hurricane winds practically, and it's warm. During the night, the winds picked up, and we thought the metal roof would blow off our shelter. The winds are now picking up water from the lake and creating sprays over a hundred feet high. A strong gust knocked me over three times this day. The winds seem to be hurricane force now. Murray, a sheep farmer from Australia, now has a new nickname, Hurricane Murray. Some hikers would crouch together to travel in these winds. Most had fallen once or twice during this portion of the trail. This Chilean guide who was being rescued was blown off the trail near the Mirador by a strong gust of wind. The winds were too strong for a helicopter rescue. He was injured at 2 p.m. and the rescuers did not reach the waiting ambulance until 10 p.m. He's okay, is it just buddy? When I 
reached the Mirador del Torres, the winds were ferocious and I could barely hold the camera. At the Hotel del Torres, since the refugio had burned down, I would be sleeping in a room there with sheets, soft towels, and a hot shower. I had to wash my hair three times to get out the grit embedded from the hurricane force winds. So it is now back to Puerto Natales and then onward to Punta Arenas. After a three-hour bus ride, I am greeted by a marching band in Punta Arenas. It is the furthest southern city in Chile at the edge of the Magellan Straits. The weather can be brutal and it both rained heavily and snowed a bit while I was here. This building, once a sheep farmer's mansion, is now a beautifully restored museum. This is a view toward the Magellan Straits and the Deepwater Harbor. Okay, this is the museum. Like many cemeteries in South America, there are miniature houses for the wealthier families and wall niches for others. Naval Museum. Sheep shearing area. And these are wool presses. Here's a typical house that was constructed in Punta Arenas area from 1875 to 1880. Here's a little bread store. Hardware store. Another viewpoint of Punta Arenas thanks to the local casino hotel. My first air flight got me back quickly to Santiago followed by a short bus ride to Valparaiso. Valparaiso is my all-time favorite city in Chile. Unfortunately, my damaged, out-of-focus video camera does not capture the vibrancy and colors of the place. With its steep streets, rickety centuries-old ascensors, artistic graffiti that would make Banksy envious, the fabulous restaurant choices, the street-side entertainment, the smells of the ocean and foods cooking, Valparaiso appeals to all of the senses. Goes all the way down, walking street mostly. Taro Rosas. It's got a lot of shops. In recognition of Valparaiso's reputation for some world class graffiti, the city has created this outdoor wall museum of 20 murals called Museo a Silo Abierto de Valparaiso. Mural number nine. I think some of the people's graffiti is better than most of these commissioned murals. Mendez. Gas man music to attract customers. Here's the harbor area.
Ito? Sigaran ito pala. Hello? Sigaran pala. Plaza Victoria. Plaza O'Higgins. The Mercado Central has markets on the first floor and lots of restaurant stalls on the second floor where you get the freshest meals. This is also derisively known as Pinochet's Palace for the former brutal dictator. This is the second home of poet and diplomat Pablo Neruda that I have seen. He built La Sebastiane near the top of Cerro Bella Vista with spectacular views of the city and harbor. Like the other home in Santiago, it is designed like a ship. Ecuador Street. This is a Communist Party office with an elaborate mural of Salvador Allende. Here are graffiti artists at work, along with some of my favorite graffiti murals I discovered while walking through Valparaiso. Banksy, eat your heart out. This protest was focused on preventing the damming of rivers of Patagonia and the use of nuclear power. This was an enjoyable water tour of the Valparaiso Harbor, complete with performing sea lions. Está en perdido y el bote naranja, el bote salva a mí. Ahí pueden ver que está fuera del agua el barco completamente en seco. Ya. Ahí va, vamos. Llegan a la playa, se abren por la proa y desembarcan los tanques. El transporte aquí en el 41. El barco que viaja. en esta nave, ellos son del puerto de Bombay, después del gobierno de Claudio.
Hey, this is downtown Vinya Del Mar. Vinya Del Mar appears to be a pricey suburb just outside Valo Paraiso with some great waterfront views from expensive homes and high rise condos. This Easter Island statue is the closest I will probably get to Easter Island. My last evening spent in Chile was at the Cinzano restaurant bar with people I met at the Casa Adventura hostel. <laughs> Santa. Podemos hablar de 